Hey everyone, thanks for watching the CB vlog right here on YouTube. Uh, you guys know what to do. If you want to help out, you can just always hit subscribe. If you've already done that, just leave a comment. Maybe you can even like share us on Twitter or something like that. Any of that kind of stuff helps. If you really want to go the extra mile, though, you can go over to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And you can help donate directly and help us actually make the show that way, whether it's with the donation or over on Discord, uh, because you'll get access to that and actually help us brew the decks. And you'll see, uh, this week we had a ton of help from our listeners over on Discord, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, check it out, patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Uh, but today we've got a pretty... It's, it's, a, it's a bigger topic, and we're going to try and uh, distill it down a little bit. Uh, anyways... Today, uh, that topic that we're talking about is talking about Commander as a totally different game than 1v1 Magic. And I mean yeah. totally different. Um, for the re and, the and the purpose of doing this is to like understand like what differences are like necessary, whether it's like rule differences and stuff like that, and what differences um, we can just kind of like artificially add. So it, it, listen, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. So here, I'll tell you where I, where I came up with this. So building a mono red deck this week and a lot of great help from Discord came in when uh, a bunch of our listeners were talking about um, how we're gonna keep up with the other decks at the table. And this is a, the, the thing that mono colored decks always have to struggle with, specifically red and white a lot of the time. But they were talking about, like, right, we're going to have to destroy people's lands. We're going to have to, like, make it so that they don't untap stuff. Things like that. So kind of these stacksy effects, these kind of things that make it so that our other players our other players don't get to play as much. Therefore, we can, you know, grind out the win that way. And that's the way that it works in 1v1. And that's a great strategy in 1v1. But in Commander, we have this social contract where it's like, we don't want to do that because we don't want the game to last three hours long. And when people sit down and play a Commander game which is already kind of a time-consuming thing, the fact that like I could just keep blowing up your lands or something like that, you don't get to play, it's just not fun. And we're ultimately all here to have fun. We're not trying to top eight some tournament and win a bunch of money, which of course is why that stuff works when we're talking 1v1. But so so this is like, this is the game we've entered. And the, the, like, the way that Wizards and the Rules Committee uh, has taken a Commander on as like kind of this official thing is that they don't want it to be too different from regular magic and that's i think that's actually great i think that's a very important thing we can't but like commander has so many differences that there's some parts of doing that um some some like aspects of the game that because we're, tr we're still trying to keep it as close to 1v1 magic as possible end up being these really big hindrances in commander so I just want to talk about like what it is. So like we're talking about um, the rules differences, right? So far currently in Commander, we have a bunch of rules differences. Our life totals starts uh, at a different total. Uh, it's a multiplayer format. Uh, right up to the first player draws a card. Like that seems to be a small one. But if you uh, look at, you know, the data of a bunch of commander games that like remember when uh, command zone did that thing the first player is favored to win uh, any game of commander right uh, they get that extra turn a lot of the times and the fact that they get to draw well like that's something you know that's not normal magic normally doesn't let the first person do that right um right there's reasons for it that we have it in the game and all that kind of stuff but anyways these are these are some just like subtle rule differences uh, that exist, and we're trying to keep it as, as pared down and as similar to 1v1 Magic as possible. But we've already accepted that there's these main differences that really make it pretty different. So basically what I'm asking here is should there be more differences? Should we take things like breaking the color pie into effect? Should we, should we talk about, like, errata, essentially some cards for Commander and some cards for not... That seems a little ex extreme to me. Uh, but I'm just sort of going off the top of my head for these. Basically, what can we do to make it so that these weaknesses that we're seeing, these mono white can't draw cards or ramp, mono red has trouble because all of its stuff is dealing with direct damage, but we've upped the life total to 40. So that makes already that bumps red down a tier just because of that, right? So like, what, what should we do? What can we do? What can wizards do? What can, you know, maybe like the rules committee or something like that do? It's, 
I told you it's a big topic, right? It's 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 tough to like hit all the aspects of it, but I just kind of wanted to get the conversation going. Sean, just off like just hearing this as like the 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 subject of this conversation. What what comes to your mind? Like is anything specific come into mind when when I'm I'm saying these things? Well, one thing I do want to add to your list of differences that you didn't touch on is that we also get a commander in the command zone that we always have access to. That's yes. a the huge whole commander thing also. is very different. I mean, deck size also that's a big thing. Singleton, yeah. another thing, right? Big differences. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day too. Like, like we have to do exactly a hundred cards, including commanders. But yes, we can't go over. Like, yeah, other command. formats are allowed to go over, but we're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So these are like. You know, they, they they always say, again, like that, you know, they don't want to make the rules too different from magic, right? That's why we did the whole mana, yeah. the, the mana, the rule, what is it? Like rule five? Rule four, four? was it? Yeah, something I like that. I don't remember. We switched Order that. 62. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where just all of your basic lands uh, attack all your singleton cards. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so they, they tried to, they, they wanted to get the, the rules more in line regular magic right and that's just a streamlining thing when you're teaching someone to play it lets players who already know how to play magic sort of move over to commander easier i get it like i'm not saying that that's bad or anything um but is it is is there something that we can do from that standpoint that like helps these main differences one of the things that we talk about a lot on the show is how in commander card draw because it's a multiplayer format, it feels like it should be available to all the colors. Whereas yeah. this started out as a color pie thing. Um, you know, in the original, originally when Magic started, it was really only blue that was drawing cards. Black had, had access to some card draw as well. And I f- it feels like, I mean, I don't know the exact timeline of it. Like maybe did green have it originally? It was always tied to like a color hating thing, it felt like. But eventually green just has a bunch of card draw, like just like anything else now. Um, and white and red are kind of left out in the cold. Red even less so these days. So white is truly left out in the cold on this. Um, so that's like that would be a pretty fundamental change. If so, like one of the things I wanted to, wanted to say is like, what can wizards do to do this? And like one of the things is uh, treat certain things no longer as color pie specific. And in fact, like in sort of breaking the color pie a little bit, right? Um, it's dangerous, right? Because the color pie is one of the things that makes magic great. And the fact that yeah. each color has weaknesses is essential to the game, right? Um, these things, and when we're talking about Commander, because it is so different, those weaknesses don't translate over the same though, right? So the color pie isn't just this straight translation from 1v1. Like, blue has trouble dealing with permanence, but no, it doesn't. It also has like re- we have enough cards in Commander because we have access to every card that like that that weakness that Blue's supposed to have they just don't have it. Like, yeah, there's numerous Blue instants that exile creatures. Yeah, rapid um, hybridization, uh, a reality shift, p- yeah. pongify, and then you've got the mat. You got the mass. You've got the the best board wipe in the game is Blue. It Cyclonic should rift. be white. Yeah, but it's not. It's Blue. So yeah. So. We've got these things that are that are not translating uh, as they should, right? Okay, so the hy- the hypothesis is Commander is a different game, so maybe we should have a slightly different color pie, in the sense of like one v one versus Commander, right? We've already given a great example how the color pie is no lo- like doesn't hold a lot of water in Commander, if you're just looking as a true or false. Like, mm-hmm. true or false, blue can't deal with permanence? False. True or false, white can't draw cards? False. Like, every color can do everything it, it, once you have access to every card ever made in its color. So maybe maybe the, the move is then to, like, m- this makes me very hopeful for the big commander products we have coming later this year. We're promised a commander draft set, which is where I expect reprints that we've been crying out for including some unique cards that will only be allowed in commander that kind of mitigate this problem so let white draw cards more right they already did give us more versions of what we already have color shift some stuff that make it to make it feel more white uh, or red or blue or all the things that need that that makes sense i mean, i don't think it should only make white better i think all we, i think you're onto something there let's just recognize that the color pie is not sacred in commander uh, and people don't brew decks that way 
people put cards in their deck. Like if you run a blue deck and you run like a Pongify, then it's like, well, then you're saying that blue's allowed to exile creatures. I think that one destroys, but yes, Rally Shift. Does it destroy? Yeah. Okay. But Reality yeah. Shift exiles, and it's two mana, sure. it's an I instant. Mean, it's like, a, million, a million examples, right? That's got to be one of the best removal spells, you know? Like, two mana to just... Anyways, so, yeah. So so there's obviously some things that, that wizards can do. Uh, they're kind of in charge of the whole thing, and the fact that they get to decide what cards do what. The idea of, yeah, printing cards directly into Commander only seems like it could do something. But it's tough, you know, because you've got to deal with the backlog, right? Like, there's no, like, what are we going to do? Ban, like reality shift and rapid hybridization we're not gonna ban can't those do cards it. you can't do that because then you're like so so it's it's uh the question i'm th- this is this is the point of this is to put this question out there because you know we can say what we can't do but it's more like but like what can we do um is it time to get rid of the social contract are are things like mass land destruction um should they be more embraced Right? That's what we can kind of do as players. But does that actually improve our game? I kind of don't think it does. Right, right. So, right. I don't think so either, right? Like, we've been having this discussion comes up constantly in all kinds of mediums. And yeah, if you let mat- land destruction go, red and white get way better. No doubt. Yeah. But one common thread among commander players is we just love to do, like, you know, like outside of the may- more competitive decks. We just want to kind of have fun. We want to cast the spells that, like, I would argue, to me, Commander is a, I love the format because it allows me to cast spells that are not castable in other formats, right? Yeah. Like, in, in Standard, you can't cast most spells because games won't let you. you right. Games won't get to that stage. You can't assemble different cool synergies because the cards aren't legal together in other formats. But in Commander, I get to cast eight mana spells from time to time, and I think that's the best. So once you start saying that land destruction is okay and that's okay, then then that become you take away the bit most fun of the format. So mate, like what about this? This is a wild idea. This cause well, this would ask. So I'm coming from the point of view. What would make it more fun? Right. Right. So I have. Let's say I have an Aloro deck that's kind of controlly that I find fun. Uh, and my friend has, let's say, like a, a Boros deck that they really love, but it just can't put up the numbers. Right. It would be more fun if it was a more competitive match, I think. Yeah. So by that logic, I mean, this is a wild idea. I don't expect many people would be okay with this. But what if you let decks with only red or white in them to color shift a few cards and just say like, hey, how about... You you can have Ristic study and pretend it's red. Interesting. Yeah. Like just let just let them run a couple blue cards. <laughs> right? What about this though? So we're, we've kind of sort of identified part of the problem is that normally red's advantage is that it deals all this damage, so it's really aggressive. Right. And an aggressive two massive strikes against aggressive decks in our format is that we start at a higher life total and there's more people to kill. Yeah, and, if, and we're not saying that aggro is like more, um, more viable than we all think. I think actually, uh, it's just that you're not going to necessarily win with it. Like it can still be really good. You just might not. You might not. You might come second. You know what I mean? Like you might be too busy killing people, and then someone else kills you. Whoa! But it's not completely out of the question to make an aggro deck, and we'll see that this week from the the show. But um. It's 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 the 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 downsides are are a lot bigger. What if we just change the life total in Commander? So I I thought that's where you were going. And as a brainstorm, what if I, I, I'm imagining hashtag twenty in twenty twenty, where for this wow. year we play Commander with twenty life and see how it goes. Wow, uh, twenty when, life. Like, like if you're in, if you're 30. in. I was What's thinking that? thirty. You went radical and went twenty. Go, let's go. Let's just see, right? I mean, if you want to check the, if you want to check the data, like let's see how that. Like, let's make red, like like it's like back to limited levels. Mm. Twenty in twenty twenty. I mean, brawl is brawl is twenty. I mean, it's obviously yeah. a much smaller card pool. Um, yeah, the power level's a lot lower there, but. I mean, I would argue if you're already winning by turn three because of a combo, it doesn't matter what life totals are. Yeah. It's true. And, and if you and if you're infect, it your life total sorta doesn't matter either. Yeah. So 
now now like now a new type of deck might open up that's like i don't know maybe it's possible like it, it certainly makes like someone like zergo way more brutal when they hit for one equipped to zergo and you're down to half your life total but maybe that's what the format needs I, maybe I, give lightning I, bolts so much more impact yeah i don't you know i don't um i don't think it's an awful idea <laughs> i uh i'm not sure how like viable it is but like if you, if we took this format down to 30 uh i'm listen I also you know every meta is different some people are out there screaming absolutely not there's already too much aggro in my meta. I, I'm already like trying to cast. I'm already trying to win on turn three and turn four because these guys are hating me out and they're they're you know, crushing me with these you know crazy fast combo decks and stuff like that. Like I need to be able to to do something with you know I need to, I need a little more life or something. But I, I mean combo decks are just going to kill you no matter what. But if you you know maybe you already deal with too much aggro. But I think on the whole you you don't see this type of thing. You don't see a lot of aggro. Um, our curves are getting lower in Commander. We're all realizing that that's more important, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of thing. But it's, yeah, it's tough. Um, just putting it out there, you know, maybe it's something to think about. Like, um, this, and this is something that the, 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 the Rules Committee and the Commander Advisory Group uh, can sort of talk about and discuss if, if, this, if this has a positive effect on those decks that we think are being way underpowered, and how negative effect does it have on the decks that are already overpowered? So, like, yeah, you know, the more disgusting we talk about it, Sultai value engines, how much do they hurt from losing 10 life as their starting total, or 20 life for that matter? And how much does a mono white deck gain from that, or a, a Boros deck? You know what I mean? Well It'll also help with a little bit with cards like Felidar Sovereign, where like you don't get to start at the winning life total. Yeah. Um, it'll change. I mean, not um, that, that card. I mean, that card is no one's saying. No, that that's not problematic. But yeah. like, but but it'll it'll like like there there's other good effects with that too. I think. Uh, does Sarah Ascendant say over twenty or over thirty? I forget the the uh, level. Thirty you or have more, to, I think. Thirty or more. Okay, yeah. so if we start at twenty, Saracen and starts as a one one for one. Uh, if yeah. you play with twenty, I'm I'm in. I I, I want to try a game <laughs> where that where, because like so many more decks become really viable. Like a suture priest holds a lot more weight if like you start with twenty. Then you're like, I don't want to cast too many creatures. And don't get me wrong. Like one of the main things I love about Commander is that it gives you the time. Yeah. To do all the stuff you want, right? To do the fun things that these other formats won't let you do. I'm just yeah. wondering if does it give us a little too much time? And again, and because of the multiplayer aspect, does it, you know, being like a balancing act, is it does it give those players who really rely on the on, you know, the balancing act, does it give them too much time specifically? I, I'm going to go, I, I don't have any data on this, but I'm going to go, my hunch is absolutely. Mm -hmm. a, a, as we've discussed, combo decks don't care about life so much. Yeah, no, no. Right? Really. Like, like so that doesn't matter. Um, and, and I'm just still thinking about more decks are appearing in my brain. Because now, like, casual, like, stormy decks that, like, don't do like the the best of storm which would be like like tendrils of agony you got to hit for way too many to win in commander but now you can do it with like oh i don't need that many um oh boy seems fun it's an like, interesting so, thing. So you, you might want to resolve uh uh what's the name of it torment of hellfire x equals five you're like i'm gonna i'm gonna do this because like life totals are low enough that this is gonna have a very big impact but it's not my winning play the other thing is like some radical thing where, and this is more of a house rule. House rules in general kind of get a little messy because people build decks to depend on these house rules. And then if you bring these decks anywhere else, they don't have these house rules in play. So like, mm -hmm. you know, your deck's going to be different. But if mm -hmm. you're exclusively playing in a, in a, in a meta you, at a store or with your group of friends or whatever, and there, there is something that um, like a house rule that, that you, like is going to address these issues and, and make them better. Um, those are worth a shot. And eventually like, you know, house rules can become real rules, that, you know, depending on how effective they are or how much they make sense. But like, what about something like, you know, there's a specific emblem that like any, like, 
it's, it's honestly uh, just in my head it made sense for like a second and then i was like wait that's way too complicated but like what if <laughs> like like it basically essentially like oh you're playing mono white you get this emblem Ooh, that's- every every ooh, maybe every okay i'm gonna run with this idea how many yeah so like if you're a monocolored, like every every color identity has an emblem. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Yeah, and yeah. like the mono white and the mono red ones help them a little bit, and the like sultai disgusting value emblem <laughs> maybe like pulls you back like a half step. <laughs> yeah, see, that's like that. I think is you can, you can't really do that, right? You can't no, have that's one not fair. Negative, but. You know, the idea of, like, the, the underpowered decks getting access to some very small advantage. Like, I'm talking very small. But well, it, would it be enough? Like, even just, like, once. Like, basically, like, you get to cast Rampant Growth once. Like, what about that? What about just being ramping once? Yeah. It's, it's or, not even or, Rampant or just, Growth. It's, like, just you get to play two lands on your first turn. Yeah. You get to play two lands. You don't even get to draw. I was going to say you start with one of one basic land out on the battlefield, but like your way is even more fair because you don't get the card. You don't get an extra card in your hand. Yeah, I don't know. See, like, yeah. So like maybe like that's something to maybe think about. I don't know. Well, I think that like the only other thing I really want to bring up uh, is that I think with Eldraine and we could draft monocolor decks, I think that became much more viable. I think wizards needs to lean on that more uh they gave us endless atlas not too long ago which taps to draw a card for two if you have i think three lands that share a name so those type of effects definitely help mono color decks of any color uh nykthos shrine to nyx and we know that we're going to get a new nyx a nykthosy type of artifact that taps for our devotion or something like that I haven't analyzed the pre like the, the previews or anything yet, mm-hmm. but that's something that if they just gave us so much more of that, then monocolor decks would be like, I mean, it would be a bit uniform. Like you wouldn't really have a lot of creativity because you kind of have to run all those things. Mm. But once you're there, you're like, great. Now, now I'm, I'm in business with everyone else. Interesting. It, you know, we don't have the answers, but um, it's nice to talk about. Because yeah. that's how you come up with answers sometimes, just by chatting about them and throwing out all the bad ideas and then being like, actually, you know, this one bad idea has like a kernel of a good idea in it. So I want to try 20 life. Yeah. I mean, is, is it as simple as a life total thing? It, it may well be. Um, if you've tried this, maybe you've already tried this in your play group. Let us know what your results were or what you even just think of this. Um, mm-hmm. Again, because every meta is different. You know, we've talked about our meta. It's at like a pretty comfortable power level. It's we're nice. We're nice in the middle there. We're, we're not overpowered. We're not underpowered. So we got a lot of range as far as, like, what decks are playable in our meta. Um, I haven't found it to be a real major problem. But I do find that if I were to build, like, a mono red, like, burn deck, there's I'm not really going to win very often. Like, I'm not. I might take out a player or two, but I'm. I know the decks in my meta. I'm not winning. I'm just not going to. There's just enough stuff that's going to stop me f- yeah. and uh, are just going to be more effective. So, yeah. Um, that being said, I have a mono white deck and it's pretty good. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> you know, right? Like, does is, is this something that even needs to be talked about? I love it. Uh, let us know. Hit us up in the, in the comments on YouTube. Hit us up on Twitter uh, if you're listening. Uh, audio styles. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's... That's it for that discussion. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And we'll see you guys next week on the vlog. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.